In the center of the island of Java, which belongs to the Indonesian archipelago, a more than 1,000-year-old monument attracts huge crowds of tourists from around the world, the Borobudur Temple. One of the main attractions of the Borobudur is the statue of a Buddha, said to be the popular shadow play hero Bhima, sitting in his bell-shaped stupa. He or she who succeeds in touching the Buddha's hands will soon find a spouse, if that is the problem, or whatever else he or she might wish. But this is not the real Borobudur. To discover its true meaning, we must separate ourselves from the noisy crowds and follow the ancient path of the pilgrims. More than 1,000 years ago, during one and a half centuries, the Borobudur Temple was one of the great pilgrimage places of the world. For days, weeks and months, people travelled by boat, walked, went on horseback or rode elephants in order to find the Enlightenment, which is contained in this monument. Can this enlightenment still be found by us who live in the present day world? The Mundut Temple is the first stage of our search. Here we are challenged by a variety of animal stories. by two geese. He holds onto the stick they carry with his teeth. People who watch from below cry out in astonishment, wow, how clever these geese are. This hurts the turtle because he feels that the praise should be addressed to him. He cannot refrain from shouting back, no, not the geese, this was my idea. He opens his mouth and falls to his death. The 
monkey is shivering in the rain sitting under a tree. The bird asks him, why did you not build a house during the dry season such as I did? This makes the monkey so mad that he destroys the bird's nest. Now both of them are suffering from the rain. Sometimes it might be better to help than to convert. The lion is afraid of the goat because he has told him that he eats lions. This makes the monkey laugh. He offers himself to accompany the lion. In order to make the lion feel safe, the monkey ties himself to his belly. Then both of them approach the goat. But the lion is still afraid and runs away dragging the monkey along the ground until he dies. Collaboration with the strong is not always the best choice. The cat pretends to be a priest carrying a rosary in order to attract the mice. However, one of the mice is very clever. So he says, Mr. Cat, if you want to become a priest, your outfit needs to be more complete. Besides the rosary, priests always carry a sacred bell. The cat agrees to be given a bell. From now on, the mice can always tell when he is coming, and they run off in time. He who tries to deceive easily gets deceived himself. This is the two-headed bird. The head on top always gets delicious fresh fruit, while the bottom head only gets the leftovers. All the bottom head's protests are in vain, since the top head merely says, it doesn't matter, all is going to the same stomach. In his despair, the bottom head eats poisonous mushrooms, and the bird dies with both of his heads. When we laugh at the animals who are haughty, hypocritical and greedy, we actually laugh at ourselves, since we live in a society which behaves just like that. Inside the Mundut temple, we encounter Buddha, who has overcome all the contradictions in society. The position of his hands shows that he fully controls the wheel of life, which means he masters the cause and the effect. We, however, who have just started our pilgrimage, still have a very long way to go until we reach this wisdom. This map shows the location of Mundut, with the two rivers Elo and Progo. Halfway to Borobudur, 
the road passes another temple, which is called Pawan. Nowadays, it takes only five minutes to drive from Mundut to Borobudur Temple. But formerly, the pilgrims had to descend the valley and cross the river Elo, climb up, descend again, cross the river Progo, and then climb up again. After a very tiring trip, the pilgrims finally reached the Pawan Temple where they took a rest, preparing themselves for the climax of their spiritual experience. Through the animal stories at Mendut Temple, we have become aware of some contradictions in our society. Maybe before, we did not see it that way, but now we know that part of our society resembles the bottom head of the two-headed bird. The top head caused the sufferings, but he who suffered was the bottom head. We know that the differences in society will cause a disaster. However, as long as we cannot control the cause of this disaster, we shall never be in a position to prevent it. The law of cause and effect is called karma. Uncontrolled passion, haughtiness, hypocrisy and greed are the cause which brings about as its effect suffering, misery and death. This is depicted in 160 reliefs at the foot of Borobudur Temple. However, more than 1,000 years ago, when this temple was built, its builders covered the foot which had been almost completed. So now most of these reliefs cannot be seen anymore. Only one corner has been reopened for the visitors. Perhaps the foot was covered just for technical reasons. It really needed to be buttressed, because otherwise the temple might have fallen down. But maybe the builders of the Borobudur had some other reasons too, which we don't know. Above the covered foot, there are four galleries where we can find 1,300 reliefs. The pilgrims used to meditate on these reliefs, walking around in circles clockwise, starting from the east gate. First they looked at the upper row to the right, then in the second round to the lower row on the same side. After that, they meditated on the pictures in the upper row to the left, and then on the stories represented underneath, 
before they climbed to the next gallery on the following floor. During the first round, the Buddha's life story, represented in 120 reliefs, was the topic of their meditation. This relief tells the story of Queen Maya, who is to become the Buddha's mother. She is in the middle of dreaming. In her dream, she sees a white elephant descending from heaven and entering her womb. After this, she becomes pregnant. When it is time to give birth, Maya has to go to a specific place the Lumbini Forest. The birth of the Buddha is followed by an incredible event. As soon as the baby is born, he can walk, and in the first seven steps he takes grows a lotus flower for each step. The Buddha isn't raised by his mother, but by his aunt since Queen Maya died just after giving birth. The three people here are three gods who come to visit. When Buddha enters the temple, all the statues of the gods descend from their pedestals to pay homage to the Buddha. All this goes to show that the Buddha is considered to be far greater than the gods. As the Buddha gets old enough, he is encouraged to marry. The name of his bride is Gopa. After their marriage, the king gives them three palaces as a gift. However, Buddha is not going to stay in palaces forever. His attitude changes after four significant encounters. This is the first one. On his travels away from the palace, he meets an old man. Then he meets a sick person. After that, the Buddha sees a dead person. Old age, sickness and death are all things that people fear, including the people back at the palace. After these three encounters, he meets a monk. Now the Buddha is convinced that there is one person who is free from fear. The monk doesn't feel threatened by old age, sickness or death. The Buddha wants to live like the monk, but his father doesn't approve. To ensure that the Buddha will not stray away from the palace, his father brings in a lot of beautiful women. Meanwhile, the palace doors are guarded closely. The Buddha no longer enjoys living at the palace. He becomes even more repulsed at the scene when the women have fallen asleep. He manages to escape while the guards are asleep. Renouncing his old life, he cuts his hair. Five disciples have joined him, and together they undertake a heavy fast.
The Buddha later realizes that it is pointless to fast to such an extreme. So he decides to accept some food that is offered to him. The disciples, however, disagree with this. Here the Buddha is washing the clothes of a dead slave, which later he wears himself. From now on, the Buddha wants to live in solidarity with the poor. The Buddha doesn't want to own anything. However, when a straw cutter gives him a cushion of braided grass, the Buddha accepts the gift. Later, he uses the straw cushion to sit on when he meditates under the Bodhi tree. Bodhi means enlightenment. His meditation doesn't always work out smoothly. At a certain stage, the Buddha is attacked by the evil goddess Mara and her troops. But the Buddha is not impressed by Mara. The arrows shot at him are turned into flowers. At another occasion, the Buddha is tempted by women dancing before him. After all of these distractions are overcome, here under the Bodhi tree, the Buddha attains enlightenment and finally becomes Buddha, which means the enlightened one. When the Buddha reaches the Ganges River, the boatman doesn't want to take him across because the Buddha doesn't have any money. But then the boatman is astonished to see that in a flash the Buddha flies across the river. For the Buddha, money is no longer necessary. Throughout all this, the Buddha has been without any disciples. The five disciples he once had deserted him long ago, disappointed because the Buddha didn't fast. But now they come back to him when they see how radiant the Buddha looks. We have finished the first round. Buddha's life story ends here with his first sermon. The pilgrims don't need to know the rest. Having been challenged by the animal stories, which showed them the contradictions in society, and after they have followed the path of Buddha's life up to this point, they must now learn to become like Buddhas themselves. Before climbing up to the next gallery, there are still three rounds to make on this floor to see the lower row of reliefs to the right and to the two rows on the left. Like at Mundut Temple, here too we can observe many animal stories. These are incarnations of the Buddha before he was born as a human being. As a hare, the Buddha has three friends, a jackal, a monkey and a marten. When a priest gets lost in the forest, each of the friends offers him something. The jackal, a jug of milk, the monkey, fruit, and the marten, seven fish. Only the hare doesn't have anything to give. So the hare offers himself to be cooked.
When there is a forest fire, the Buddha appears as a young quail who is still very weak. All the other animals run away, but the young quail speaks to the fire with holy words full of power and truth. The fire stops and everybody is saved. Evidently, the incarnated Buddha believes in spiritual power much more than in physical strength. As a deer, the Buddha has eight legs. When he gets tired, he can turn over and use the four legs he has on his back. On a certain day, he is pursued by a king hunting in the forest. The eight-legged deer never gets tired, but the king is soon at the end of his strength and falls into a ravine. Rather than profiting from this situation by running away, the eight-legged deer saves the king. When the lion devours a goat, a piece of bone gets caught in his throat. He cries for help to the cuckoo who happens to fly by. The cuckoo is an incarnation of the Buddha. With his bill he takes out the piece of bone from the lion's throat. To test the lion he then asks, Lion, king of the forest, what will be my reward now? The lion replies, Reward? You're still safe and I didn't swallow you when you were in my mouth. That's a very generous gift if you ask me. Why are you still after a reward? The Buddha's readiness to help is sharply contrasted with the haughty attitude of the king. The Buddha is on the side of the weak and downtrodden. When a group of tradesmen gets shipwrecked, the Buddha incarnated as a giant turtle saves them by carrying them on his back to the shore. There the tradesmen get hungry. Noticing this, the turtle offers himself as food. After four rounds in the first gallery, the pilgrims still have to do six rounds more, two rounds each in the second, third and fourth galleries. In these galleries, the story is told of a tradesman called Sudhana, who chooses to become a Buddha. On his journey, he visits 55 good friends that is to say, 55 wise persons to take their advice. At this stage, the pilgrims have already done 10 rounds through four galleries. Now they enter the highest part of the temple. Kala, the powerful god of time, with his huge mouth swallows all the hindrances of the past. Once all these obstacles disappear, the pilgrim is free to attain enlightenment. This part is called the realm without form. The rectangular form of the galleries has given way to circles. There are no reliefs up here and almost no ornaments. Each of the 72 bell-shaped stupas covers the statue of a Buddha.
higher we climb, the calmer it gets. The holes at the stupas below are diamond shaped, but the holes at the stupas in the highest row are restful squares, showing that the final calmness has now been reached. Besides the 72 stupas arranged in circles of 32, 24, and 16, there is still one more the main stupa. This stupa is empty. Whether originally there was meant to be something in it, we don't know. Maybe there doesn't need to be anything inside this stupa. The emptiness represents perfection, true perfection which needs no further explanation. At this stage, the pilgrims feel that they have finally reached the destination of their pilgrimage. They feel like they don't want to go down, Yet, they have to go down and leave this place. They have to go back to the busy world to live the life the Buddha has taught them by way of Borobudur. Those who have learnt from Borobudur are called to descend into reality with new eyes, with the Buddha's eyes, and also with the eyes of the downtrodden and suffering. Because in them are the eyes of the Buddha.